Hi there, my name is Mrs. Jenkins. I wanted to take a look with you today at solving inequalities. And there's a couple of notes here I want you to make and remember when you're working with solving inequalities. First of all, when you solve an inequality, you will get more than one answer. When you solve an equation, you'll often get answers like x equals 5. But when you're solving an inequality, you're going to get an answer like x is less than 5, which can be a lot of different answers. Answers like 3, negative 4, 2, and there's an infinite number of answers. But you see, you get more than one answer. x is any value less than 5. Now, the goal of solving an inequality is the same as when you're solving an equation. You want to get that variable all by itself. How do you do that? Well, you're going to use the properties of inequalities. And they're exactly the same as the properties of equality, with one exception. But first of all, let's review those properties. The properties of inequality state that you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide anything you want, as long as you do it to both sides of the inequality. And then accept, big exception, and don't forget it. When you multiply or divide both sides of your inequality by a negative value. So if you divide both sides by negative 4, or you multiply both sides by negative 1 third, what you have to do is reverse that inequality sign, which means if you had less than, you flip it over to greater than. If you had less than or equal to, you flip it over to greater than or equal to, and vice versa there. And that's when you multiply or divide by a negative value. Otherwise, it's very similar to solving an equation. In fact, let's look at a couple of examples. In our first example here, we want to solve for x. So we want to get our variable x all by itself. Now, in order to do this, let's start by subtracting 7 from both sides of our inequality. When we do that, that's going to result in 3x is less than or equal to 22 minus 7 is 15. Now, to get that x all by itself, I need to divide both sides by 3. When I do that, my answer will be x is less than or equal to 5. And that will be my answer there. The 3's cancel here on the left side, and I have 5 on the other. I won't switch my inequality. I divided both sides just by 3, not negative 3. Now, I've got another example here, and this is the one I want you to work through on your own. Do your best to go ahead and solve for y. When you've gotten your answer, click Continue at the bottom of the screen. Let's start to solve this inequality by adding 12 to both sides of our inequality. When we do that, we're going to be left with negative 2y is greater than 8. Now we want to divide both sides, and we're dividing by negative 2. I hope you remember negative 2 we're dividing both sides by. What does that mean? That means we need to change that inequality, and we'll be changing it so it's not greater than, now it's less than. So the answer you should have gotten was that y is less than negative 4. If I come here to my number line, I have negative 4 here. It will be an open circle at negative 4, and y will be everything less than. I hope this has helped you in better understanding when you're solving for inequalities. And you did good work on those examples, but if you need any more help for your algebra homework, just sign up for Nutshell Math. I hope I'll see you there.